You're watching, old mates. Backyard Tech. All right. Ground noise. Ground hum. Ground hiss. I mean, pick one, you'll be right. In the pro audio and music industry, it can be a nightmare. It can ruin a perfectly good recording. It can throw you off in a mix session. And in some cases, it can throw you off in a mastering session as well. One of the big problems is also trying to find the source of it. Sometimes it can be an amp. Sometimes it can be an interface. Sometimes it can be power. There are a myriad of problems that can, that can be caused from ground hum, hiss and noise. One of my long-time viewers and supporters here at Old Mates Backyard Tech, I believe has been around since the old Backyard IT days, got in touch with Old Mate last week. I think it was last week or earlier this week. Wanting a video. And he's sort of suffering a similar problem to what I'm suffering from. Now, not all of us have got the money or the ability to do various mitigation of ground issues. But there are some things you can try if you're stuck. What I will say about this one particular viewer is their digital audio interface leaves my crap stick USB 1.1 horrendous piece of bad mixing up in the dust. In fact, I'm slightly jealous of what they've got. As you can see in the background, it's Old Mate's Q&A and advice time here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech combined with a pro audio video. And for this one, if you are suffering ground noise, ground hiss, ground hum, What's old mate's opinion of getting around this issue? Well, funnily enough, some of it can be in the pro audio, also radio, TV, ham radio, so on and so forth. It all comes down to one ground point. Literally, you got questions about some IT stuff. You got questions about AV stuff. You got questions about the 80 series Land Cruiser? You're at the right spot. From Old Mate's Backyard Tech, this is Old Mate's Q&A and Advice. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. It is Old Mate's Q&A and Advice time here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech combined with a pro audio video. Obviously it's Friday, so it's pro audio stuff on a Friday. And one of, my, one of my long-time viewers and supporters here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech, and as I said, I think, he, I think he's been around since the Backyard IT days. Now he's here for Old Mates. Uh, musical Neptunian. Morning to my fellow Melbourneian. He comes from my hometown. He's, uh, he's got a bit of an issue um, regarding noise or ground or however you want to do it he's got you know obviously ground loop issues now i'm a little bit jealous of you i'm not going to go through the whole email um because it's 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 extensive but one one thing i will say is the lucky bugger and i mean that managed to score himself a scarlet focus right 212 third generation interface with mike pre and phantom power Like I said, it leaves my bad mixing a 202 in the dust. The UCA that I use. At least this thing's got mic pre's, although when you think about it, I'm using mic pre's except I'm using a mixing console. But it's a decent digital audio interface. The issue he's having from is uh, he's tried to using different USB slots. He's also running around, I should actually tell you, he is running around with a Rode N... T1 microphone. Now, Rhodes are a good Australian company. Uh, old mate should be supporting Australian. I'm running around with a Shaw mic. Um, so that's a good mic. The NT1 is actually a really nice sounding microphone. Um, could you do a video when you next... Uh, could you do a video when you have time on ground hum and audio interfaces for anyone who might be having this problem? Have you ever encountered this issue in your audio career... Yes, I can do a video on this and I can bring you guys up to speed with how to get around some of the issues. Now, you guys all know, okay, yes, my video quality is atrocious and I agree with that, but the audio is actually better than the video. Um, miles ahead of it, actually. All right, ground noise, ground hiss, ground hum. 
I pick one, you'll be right. Ground loops the whole lot. Now, Omega God, Harold, also a music and audio person as well. He'll be able to also give Paul Musical a little bit of a heads up with this as well. But anyway, you guys all know I have for years here on YouTube up until recently suffered massive ground noise, ground hiss, ground hum problems. All right. Both with my audio interface, the Yamaha, the PC, everything. There are a few things that can cause it. One in particular is fluoro lights. They, they are a menace with audio. Okay? You ever turned on your radio and then turned on a fluoro light and you can hear the fluoro start off? Or you're listening to a piece of music on a piece of analog equipment and turn the freaking fluoros on. This is why in recording studios, fluoros are used as a, as a very bare minimum because of that fact. All right? The ballasts let fly. So... Ground loop, ground hum, ground hiss, whatever you want to call it, is just, it, it, it can destroy the everything, okay? I've co copped it many, many times. A few, th There's a few ways to get around it, all right? In a full-on recording studio, one way to get rid of ground, and you, if you don't have the ability to do it, is run power and audio like that at 90 degrees to each other. That, that basically reduces the interference caused between power and audio lines and stops, you know, um, inductive voltages getting into your audio feeds, all right? And that can reduce it as well. One other thing, though, is a common ground. Now, here at home, I, I've now got a common ground, but I didn't. There were two ground points in this house. And depending on what circuit you were on would depend on what ground point you were coming from. Now, that's all been deleted and modified, but that's how it used to be here at home, all right, was just this whole, you know, depending on which plug you plugged something into would depend on which ground you were in, okay, now I know people are going to be like, but old mate, digital audio, not affected, ah, true, but when you have noise coming down from something before it gets into the digital converter, that noise will go through. So you need to mitigate the analog noise so that you don't end up with digital noise, okay? Because what you've got to remember with, with some interfaces, not all, but some, they'll just take the entire audio signal, including the noise, and convert it. Some of them have the ability to cancel it out. They might have a noise filter or, or some sort of power filtration system within the audio signal path and be able to filter it out, but some don't. Some just see the whole signal and convert that entire signal, including the noise. Now, a Scarlett Focusrite 212 is a really nice interface, and the Rhodes NT1 mic is a really nice mic. Okay, it's no Neumann, I know, but it's still a really nice microphone. So, Paul Musical's got ground noise, ground loop, ground hum, take your pick. So, what do we do to mitigate this? Well... You could do what old mate's done and go out and get a power eliminator. That's one option. Now, not all of us can do that. In a recording studio environment, they'll have serious filtration systems in some of the new recording studios today to mitigate electrical noise and ground noise and loops and hums and hiss. Extensive filtration systems. Power smoothing systems. Again, not all of us have the ability to do that. So what are some of the things musical can do? Well have all his entire audio system, including his computer, on the same circuit, if it can take it, of course, so that all the Earths are in the one spot. Now, ham radio operators do this as well. They'll Earth everything to one point as well. Okay. One point of Earth reduces spurious frequencies and Earth hum because everything's going into one point. Okay. Now, the way I got around the problem here at home was I got a power eliminator. That's how I got rid of it, and my mate gave that to me. But they can be very expensive. Very expensive. Okay? So, from that point of view, you know, um, you need to, you know, that's one option. In a live environment... You would run power and audio 180 degrees apart or as far apart as you could to prevent, 
you know, interference. Now, you guys know up at the other half's parents' church, I'm using, unfortunately, I have taken over, as we know, and I have unshielded power wire, so brown and blue, for front of house, going at 45 degrees to a bunch of fluoro lights. Immediate, absolutely immediate interference induction. Because every time we turn the fluoro lights on, you can hear it go straight through the speakers. So, and we've got earth problems at the other halves anyway. There's two earth straps. All right. So, musical, what you could do, and, and this is if you can, all right, is try to get your audio and power like that. Or like that. It doesn't matter. I mean, pick one, you'll be right. That's one way of getting rid of the problem. Number two is get a filter. You know, get a filter for the interface and your PC. Now, we all know power supplies, particularly now, are less noisy. But switch mode can create its own problems, which is why often you find that mixing consoles, particularly in the analog realm, weren't switching. Now, some of the newer digital consoles have filtration systems in them to avoid the switching noise. All right, linear power supplies were so much easier to filter out noise. Now, the Yamaha is a digital desk. It has a switch mode power supply, but it has inbuilt filtration to isolate particularly the 48 volt phantom power before the rest of the switch mode. Okay, now the 212 does have phantom power capabilities. It's actually really, I'm, I'm a little bit jealous that he's got a 212, to be honest with you. Um, so, musical, there's a few things you can do. One, you can filter out your power. Two, run your power at 90 degrees to your analog audio. All right. So try and make it that it's like this. If that doesn't work, have your power and your audio separated by 300 mil. That'll reduce it. That's, that's really all you can do. I mean, Harold would know this too. Looking for ground hum and ground noise and noise interference problems in an audio signal path is a nightmare. Tracking them down can be horrendous. All right. It really can drive you completely and utterly batty. Hello, there's the other half. Hang on a minute. Sorry about that. As I was saying, trying to find ground loops and ground hum and ground noise can, can you know, apart from driving you batty, can also drive you, end up driving you up the wall. So what you, the, the ways you try and get around it is obviously a power filter and plug everything you can into that filter, all right? Or, you know, run your power and audio like this. Unfortunately, though, if your house power, like old mate, is... Uh, not exactly clean and a little noisy, there's not much you can really do about it. In fact, you're sort of caught between a rock and a hard place. So, in the case of musical, and I know the area of Melbourne this viewer lives in, right? not far from actually where I was born. Um, the power around there, it's old, uh, I don't know whether the transformers and that have been replaced, but some things you can do to mitigate it is to find, you know, if, you, if you've got fluoro lights, change them for something else. Do the LED conversion or just buy some, you know, incandescent or LED light stands to light up your studio space. Okay, that can get rid of it. Um, Run your power and your audio on the analog side, you know, like that, or separated by 300 mil if, if necessary, 12 inches. Um, try and move your computer, all right? Maybe your computer's inducing noise. Try and move it away from your audio interface, etc. all right? Bit of an anecdote here. Many, 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 many years ago, I was doing a live audio engineering session and uh, you guys know I'm not a fan of live audio okay I 
recording studios. That that that's what I prefer. But I was involved with a live session, and I was um, assistant mixing person along with outboard gear um, supervisor, basically. We had a stage, we had a master mix console, we had an FB console. We also had an FB uh, power amp. We couldn't work it out during rehearsals. We could not work out why there was so much noise on stage and none with with main. Uh, stay, FB on stage was just horrendously hissy and noisy. We, we, we were trying to figure it out until we realised that the people who delivered all the all the stuff hadn't actually followed what we'd asked them to do. The stage, now this is outdoor, was completely separate on the same on a completely different earth. There you go. See, the earth strap was two different earth straps, right? In fact, two entirely different power systems were put in. We asked for one. We got two. So out of nowhere, we've got, you know, beautiful, clean sound for, for, for main and noisy, dirty sound for FB on stage. And what we ended up doing was a little bit funky uh, electrical rewiring and job done. So in the case of musical, what I'd suggest you do, either find a power filter. If you're in a room with fluoro lights, get some incandescent stands or LED light stands or something. That'll reduce it even further. Um, run your power and ground, power and audio 90 degrees or across each other or, you know, a foot apart, 300 mil. Move your computer maybe away from your, from your digital audio interface. Um, or, like I said, you know, you can get a power filter. Um, the, the, the issue really, and Harold's said this, um, commented in videos like this before, and I, I knew all this anyway, was that finding ground noise and ground loops and ground hums, it, it, it can be completely impossible. You, you, you can mitigate it, but you may never be able to completely trash it. All right. Now, here in Australia, it's 50 hertz. US be 60 hertz, right? So we, 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 the frequencies can in, induce noise as well. So for, for all of us who are around the 50 hertz um, noise mark, you can, you know, you might be able to get the 50 hertz hum out of it by dropping off 50 hertz. Instead of rolling it off, just cut it right off. That's one way to get rid of it during post production. Um, where my viewers are with 60 hertz, or the same thing, you just drop that 60 hertz right off. And that can help get rid of it, right? It won't completely trash it, but you might be able to get rid of it enough that it's mitigated itself out and you don't have to worry about it, all right? You've probably noticed, and I've been doing this for a while, which I don't need to do as much of now, but I was using noise suppression a lot to try and reduce that earthing noise. Now, I don't use it as much now, in fact, if I turn it off, what you end up hearing is actually the computer vibrating through the desk. Because oh, my main rig is not water cooled. Does it matter? No, of course it doesn't matter. I don't need water cooling because I don't push it hard enough to warrant it. And that's not being sarcastic, that's being realistic. So musical, there's a few things you can try. Com you know, Maybe have everything on one circuit. All right, one circuit. And just put everything through it. All right. Um, get a get a power filter box. Run your audio and analog sources like that. All right, and that will reduce some of it. But the thing is, you're never going to completely get rid of Earth unless you do you know one of three things. You physically build a whole new system and rewire the entire place. You put a you buy one of those expensive power filtration systems and put them on your house. They can be super expensive. You get a power eliminator like I've got that can reduce a lot of it as well, and also help clean up the power too. All right, spurious power spikes, voltage spikes, 
uh, current spikes, so on and so forth. So you, you, there's things you can do, but the only way to trash Earth entirely is have a single ground point and everything in your entire audio system goes to that ground point and you put a power filter in front of it. And no fluoro lights. That's the other reason I use a little bit of noise suppression. These things above my head are stupid noisy. That is because these lights are on the same circuit as everything else here. All right? These lights are on the same circuit as the mixer, the amp, the PC, the UPS, Plex, the televisions, everything. It's all on one circuit, right? And because these lights above my head are fluoro, the ballasts and the starters will go right through this system electrically, as well as when you turn them on, they induce enough noise that the mic will pick it up too. I may not hear it, but the mic will pick it up. So musical, they're your options, mate. Um, power filter, rewire, um, or try and move your PC as far away, you know, your, your, your power sources as far away from your, your ADAC as you can. There's some simplistic ones. I mean, there's a heap of other ways of doing it, but Harold said the same thing to me a couple of years ago. I knew this already. Hunting them. It will drive you mental. There we go. Q and and advice for a musical Neptune. And hopefully that helps him out. Um, as I said, I am a little jealous of your musical with a 212. You bugger. <laughs> I, for those of you who aren't aware, I, I, I know my preference personally is with Burl and Apollo, which is obviously UA. I, they're my preferences. But even I do admit the 212 Scarlet Focusrite is a really nice ADAC with 48 volt. Okay, it is nice. All right. But my preference is Burl and Apollo. They're just, that's just what I prefer. All right, we all have our own preferences. And I know my preferences cause everyone to disagree. Always. Because the way things are here on YouTube these days, if you don't like something, you're considered a heathen. But I prefer Apollo, you know, from UA, and obviously, you know, Burl. For those of us who know the B85, it's probably the best one out there. There we go. Anyway, hopefully that helps out and gives him some ideas. Up next, well, a bit of a special presentation for you guys. I'm going to finish off my latest track, and I'm going to release it today. Mm -hmm. 